Right now at 11, Roe versus Wade now overturned. This decision must not stand! Heartbreak. All of a sudden, it just feels like, what, what happened? This is not the world I want my daughter to grow up in. And relief. See, this is just the beginning of, you know, the pro-life generation. Abortion rights in limbo for millions. It's about just being there for each other and just like letting them cry and letting the emotions flow and then after just being ready for actions. A country divided, our neighbors too. Sir, sir, stop, stop, have, why don't you to stop? Tonight, we're focused on this new reality so many are grappling with and what happens next. Live from the nation's capital, this is WUSA 9 News at 11. This is a day that will go down in history. A woman's right to have an abortion is no longer protected under the Constitution. You can feel the anger in our city, and you can feel the celebration and relief. Two very different reactions to the historic Supreme Court ruling that overturned Roe versus Wade. Thank you for being here with us at 11 o'clock. I'm Lorenzo Hall. This is truly a seismic shift in the law of our country, leaving the future of health care for millions of Americans up in the air. We're seeing demonstrations all across the U.S. and here in our backyard, right outside the Supreme Court. Now, there's a lot to unpack tonight. Our News at 11 team is putting this all into context. We're speaking with neighbors who are protesting and celebrating the decision, and we'll explain what the future of abortion rights could look like in Virginia, Maryland, D.C., and West Virginia. But first up tonight, let's take you live to the Supreme Court. Our John Henry is there to show us what's happening right now. Hey, John. Hey, Lorenzo, there's still about 100 people here outside the Supreme Court. It's nothing like it was earlier today, but these people are still passionate. Many of them have actually been out here since 10 a.m. when the decision was first handed down, and we expect many people to be out here throughout the weekend. When you come for our rights. At Union Station Friday afternoon. When you come for our rights. We found hundreds of people still in shock. I do not have the words to express how angry and how devastated I am. This crowd vented their frustration over the court's decision while sharing stories about the importance of abortion to them. I started carrying what I gained, my autonomy, my empowerment. But they did not stand still. Instead, they made their presence known to the rest of the district. The neighbor, they started it. They started it. And we gonna finish it. These women and men marched all the way to where the decision was handed down. Show me what democracy. The Supreme Court. Earlier in the day, we spoke to many people at the court here who oppose abortion. I am so grateful to my Lord Jesus Christ. It's a great win for both morality but also jurisprudence. Uh, we say black lives matter, uh, but they really don't when it comes to babies in the womb. But they were quickly outnumbered by those who support abortion rights, people like Chevy Chase resident Ava Kaufman. I was in my first year of medical school when I got pregnant, but, and I had an abortion. I've been a doctor for 40 years, taking care of a lot of people. I would have never been able to do that. She came down with her daughter, Emma, who could not believe the events of the day. Our rights are getting taken away, and it breaks my heart. Now you can see there's still a pretty heavy police presence out here too, Capitol Police and the Metropolitan Police Department. For the latter, D.C. Police, we do know that they have an elevated uh, stance, uh, status level here throughout the district to keep an eye on protests that will be occurring throughout the weekend. We actually saw a couple of dozen bicycle officers come through here about an hour ago as well. Lorenzo? Yeah, thankfully people have been protesting peacefully. John Henry outside of the Supreme Court for us. Thank you, my friend. Now let's zero in on what happens next. That ruling is expected to lead to abortion bans in roughly half the country. Take a look at this map with me right now. The 13 states highlighted have so-called trigger laws. That means all or nearly all abortions in those states are banned as of now or will be shortly. So what's happening here at home? We have you covered on that tonight. Let's begin in Virginia with our Colby Satterfield. And Colby, abortions are legal in the Commonwealth right now, but we know there's a growing push to put more restrictions in place, right? That's correct, Lorenzo. Virginia Republicans are gearing up to draft anti-abortion rights legislation while Democrats are preparing to stop it in its tracks. It's a conversation that's just getting started. Division in Virginia over the future of abortion rights in the Commonwealth. The issue split along party lines, where currently abortion is legal up to 25 weeks in pregnancy. Governor Glenn Youngkin announcing his goal to shorten that to 15 weeks, saying in a statement, quote, I'm proud to be a pro-life governor and plan to take every action I can to protect life. The truth is Virginians want fewer abortions, not more abortions. I was encouraged and ecstatic. This is a decision that those of us who are pro-life legislators 
have been waiting for for a very long time. The governor tapping several Virginia lawmakers to prioritize restricting abortions after 15 weeks. However, Democratic State Senator Scott Serval says any such bill wouldn't make it out of committee, noting Virginia is still a safe haven. I do think, though, you're going to you're going to see a lot more people coming into Virginia to uh, have abortion procedures because of where Virginia is positioned regionally. There's other states that touch our borders and surround us that where women don't have these rights. Amy Hagerstrom Miller agrees. She's the president and CEO of Whole Women's Health, which runs abortion clinics in the D.C. region. We are available and open in Minnesota and Virginia and Maryland and Indiana, and uh, we will continue to expand our services there. This is something we will keep an eye on as the General Assembly reconvenes in January. It's also important to note that lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are highlighting the 2023 election, especially here in the Commonwealth, where abortion rights could take center stage. Live in Arlington, Colby Satterfield, WUSA 9. It will definitely take center stage. Colby, thank you so much. All right, now to D.C. Abortions are legal in the city, but D.C. is not a state, and that means abortion rights could be taken away by a future Congress and president who don't agree with the city's laws. We will not back down. We know how to fight to protect ourselves and to protect our citizens, uh, but we also know that this Congress can make decisions to pass laws to keep women and our rights safe. All right, now to Maryland, where abortions are legal under state law. Republican Governor Larry Hogan says he swore an oath to uphold the Constitution and the laws of Maryland, and he will continue to do that. Our Rafael Sanchez Cruz is in Maryland tonight, and Rafael, you're learning the governor is facing some criticism tonight. That's right. All eyes are on Governor Larry Hogan, who's withholding funds to train medical experts to perform abortion services. Maryland is being called the southernmost safe state for abortion access by reproductive health advocates, allowing abortions until the fetus is viable outside the womb. The president of Planned Parenthood Maryland says they're expecting an influx of out-of-state patients seeking safe abortions, but there's an issue. We don't have enough providers to meet the demand that already exists here in Maryland. Two-thirds of Maryland counties have no abortion care provider. Anticipating the overturn of Roe versus Wade, Maryland's General Assembly expanded abortion access by allowing nurse practitioners, nurse midwives, and physician assistants to perform these procedures. Also allocating $3.5 million in state funds annually to train these new providers. Governor Larry Hogan vetoed the bill, saying it would set back standards for women's health care and safety. Lawmakers overrode that veto, but the governor is still withholding funding for the expansion. That is going to limit people's access to reproductive health care. Appointment wait times are going to increase. People are going to have difficulty finding a provider who's available. Democrats saying they're gearing up to codify abortion rights in the next legislative session. What we would like to do next session is to actually place these protections in our constitution. And I think that that's the next policy that you will see. Hogan's office saying tonight that the governor opposes weakening the standards on women's health. If he does not release these $3.5 million, they will roll over for the next fiscal year. Live in Wheaton, Maryland, Rafael Sanchez Cruz, WUSA 9. All right, Rafael, thank you. Now, West Virginia is one of those states with a pre row ban, so let's verify where things stand in West Virginia right now. We check with the West Virginia State Code, the state constitution, and Dr. Ann Banfield, an OBGYN who worked in West Virginia for 13 years. She says with row overturned, a law passed in the 1840s would come back into effect. That law made performing abortions illegal. Dr. Banfield says with Roe overturned, abortion services in West Virginia will be severely restricted, if not completely restricted. West Virginia Attorney General Patrick Morrissey didn't get back to us when we asked whether his office intends to immediately enforce that 1840s law. Now, we can tell you because of all this, the only abortion clinic in West Virginia is no longer performing abortions. According to the Associated Press, the Women's Health Center of West Virginia in Charleston will remain open for services like providing birth control and cancer screenings, but it will no longer perform abortion procedures. The center says this will force West Virginians to travel hundreds of miles away from their home to access health care.